Phone Song, which is on this album, was actually inspired by um, a girl in our youth group um, who had actually had to go, like, I think her phone was broken or might have gotten it take away, taken away or something like that. But she she went without it for like a few days and started getting like anxiety and like panic attacks from not having her phone. And it was almost like she was going through withdrawals as if it was a drug. First of all, it is so nice to meet you, Angela. And I'm just gonna let you introduce yourself and tell us why you're here, because I think it has to do with something musical, correct? <laughs> yes, I'm Angela De La Pena, and I'm a part of Fellowship Creative. Um, Fellowship Creative is our creative team here at Fellowship Church. Um, we lead worship mainly on the weekends, but we also write music and release um, albums and music. And so we've just released a project called The Help Project. Um, it's our latest album. We're super excited about it and super excited to share more about it with you. So what was the whole process like to, um, from the idea of, hey, let's put out like an album versus just, you know, we lead worship at church and we you know the whole idea of collectives are very popular right now. Can you kind of give us a quick summary of start to finish? Yes. So it's funny that you say that we are part of a church um, led by Ed Young and his whole thing, he always says, um, you know, the church should be the most creative entity on the planet. And, you know, we're created by God, the creator and his image. So we should be creative. Um, and so we're always kind of looking of how to way how to do things differently in different ways. Um, and this album just kind of naturally progressed in like, OK, this isn't worship. This is obviously kind of something else, a little bit more artistic. It's not necessarily something that we'll play on Sunday mornings for our congregation, um, but it's something that we really felt the world needed right now, and especially our young people. And it's just a message that we all know we need to hear and remind ourselves. And we see each week our youth um, in our youth group, you know, struggling with all kinds of things. And so we really wanted to just speak to that. <laughs> when it comes to the lyrics, can you tell us the writing process um, of, did you get your pastor in Involved to kind of overlook what you were writing or yeah tell us everything so the lyrics I mean each song was kind of different um I can tell you a little bit of the story behind a few of the songs but they're all inspired by stuff that was just going on in our church and obviously in the world as well um and this that usually you know we as we write worship music, we'll run it through some of our staff that are just like theological geniuses <laughs> and make sure, you know, hey, if we're missing anything, make sure that this is, you know, correct. This is theologically accurate. We don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, and then this one being obviously a little different in the sense that it's not worship. There was a little bit more creative liberty, but at the at the core of everything, it was, this is to share Jesus with people in a different way. Um, and so specifically for a few songs, um, Phone Song, which is on this album, was actually inspired by um, a girl in our youth group um, who had actually had to go, like, I think her phone was broken or might have gotten it take away, taken away or something like that. But she, she went without it for like a few days and started getting like anxiety and like panic attacks from not having her phone and it was almost like she was going through withdrawals as if it was a drug and so we just saw and I know we can all you know fall victims to being to being on our phones too much scrolling through social media too much and then that can just lead you down a dangerous rabbit hole of you know the comparison game and all kinds of things and there's statistics out there that show direct links from you know addiction to technology and depression, anxiety, and all the things that it can lead to. So um, we just wanted to speak on that and just, you know, remind everybody, like, we all need to just disconnect a little bit for some time so that we can, you know, reconnect with God. Um, so that was just something that was going on that we saw at our church, obviously. And then um, Help, which is the title song for the, for the project, that actually came about, we were writing one day, um, a few of us from the team, and um, we were talking about um, a social media post that our pastor Ed Young had posted. And it was a clip from one of his recent sermons. And he was saying, you know, addressing some issues that were going on in the world. And then one of the things he said was, you know, as humans were flawed, but Jesus is the only answer. You know, we have to find hope in him. We have to cling to him. And there was a comment on there and it was a little bit negative and we were, we were looking at it and just kind of sparked conversation. But the comment was something along the lines of, how could somebody who lived 2000 years ago still be relevant today? And how could he, you know, be an answer for what we're facing today? How can he still be relevant? And so that just kind of sparked conversation in us and just kind of like, 
let us see the world for how it is and how desperately we need Jesus and how he really is our only hope and our only answer. So that's kind of what inspired the song help. Actually, I love that. I think growing up a lot of times in the church, um, even in families, Christian families, it's like, if you have a tough question, don't ask it. You're just supposed to believe. But what I love about Jesus Christ is that there's historical evidence outside of the Bible for the person of Jesus Christ. So yeah. he is God because he is. But when someone asks a question that deep, usually there's a longing for something else. Maybe either they were, they had some experience of like in their life, but mm -hmm. that question is a question that is raised by so many people. Yes. Number one, how is he relevant? Why is he relevant? And why should I listen to anything he has to say? Mm -hmm. But right there, that actually, I love what you guys did. Instead of saying, well, we're just going to ignore the comment and we don't, we're not going to answer it. No, we're going to use that opportunity to share the gospel, to share the truth about Jesus. Yes. Um, I love that there's so much, there's so much truth in Jesus Christ. Like he is truth. And what I think was cool that you brought up both of those songs, I I'd want to look at that little girl and I, you know, when we have this phrase of find your identity in Christ. I was just talking to my dad this morning and I said, dad, that phrase is so Christianese. We hear it every day. Yeah, find our identity in Christ. But what is it? What is it? Like, what is it? And then I started going through things and I said, okay, if we look at the 10 commandments, the, the, the first two commandments are about having to deal with idols and idol worship. And we think, well, we're not looking at the golden calf, um, <laughs> but modern day idols are like that poor little girl. Her phone. Yeah. Yeah. And her whole identity was in her phone, her life, her friends, her worth or her lack of self-worth, depending on if she got it, probably if she got a like on Instagram, because it affects all of us. Mm -hmm. As I said, when her identity was in a way taken away from her, it caused all this anxiety issues, which is so common in a lot of teens. And honestly, I would think a lot of people today who are on their phones, but when our identity is truly rooted in Christ, and that's a whole nother thing about how to get there. It's looking up scripture verses to remind you of who God says he is, who God says you are, and to go to it for all life's questions. Her identity won't be so much, like the withdrawal symptoms won't be as strong because we know that that is not our source of life anymore. So my point is, is, you know, finding your identity in the source of life and the source of life is Jesus Christ, who is still relevant because he is God and he still exists today. Another thing I love and I'm going on a sermon here, but I love this. I love what you brought up. It's like totally a God thing. What I love about the Bible is that it doesn't change. In a mm -hmm. world where there's another app every day, and there's this style and that style, and this look and that look, the Bible is consistent. And it's and it, it I know that so many times trends cause us anxiety because we want to look like her or be like him or do what that's doing. And it's like, oh, it's exhausting. <laughs> And even socially, like even what's going on in our world, like what people are doing, what where the lines are gray now. And it's like, it's so easy to say, oh, well, this is okay now. Or, well, the Bible doesn't necessarily mean this. And people take their interpretations. And one thing that I love about the Bible is it's truth. It's the same. It's constant. It's never changing. It's so funny that you were saying all that about identity. One of our other songs, <laughs> not to shameless plug, one of our other songs is actually literally about everything you're saying about identity. It's called Who We Are. And I, I won't like read you all the lyrics or anything, but the main chorus and the main idea is just kind of like this generation in this world. It's like, we don't know who we are. We're searching for love. We just want to be heard and seen. And then kind of later in the song, when you get to the bridge, it just really just um, encourages and reaffirms people and just asks the question, do you know that you're loved? Do you know that God's not mad at you? Do you know how important you are to Jesus? And so uh, I think identity is one of the biggest issues we're facing right now. Totally. There's they're getting slammed with all kinds of different things from every which direction. So yeah, identity is huge, whether it be sexual identity or identity in who I am, or for a lot of young girls and guys, like, well, my identity is based on who I like at the moment. So mm -hmm. it's so confusing for us. And so I love the fact that you guys as a church, like we know we see a lot of collectives that are putting out worship music and we absolutely need it because we absolutely need to worship the one true God. But I also love that you guys are doing stuff, music that your average person is dealing with, because that's part of, you know, we're not going to be healed until we admit that we're sick. Yes. 
I like that you guys um, took that route. And what made y'all choose to do that route versus traditional worship music that is popular, but like Elevation and you know all these other collectives? Well, I mean, really, just going with the culture of our church, we are our our vision is totally to be able, like what you said earlier about how you know my identity in Christ that's so Christianese. Everything that we do, we filter through what can anybody understand, whether they've been a part of church their entire life and they know the Bible backwards and forwards, or if they've never stepped foot in a church and they're, you know, angry at God or don't believe he exists. What will speak to all of those people? What will they understand if they've never read the Bible for, before? Will they understand what we're saying? And so um, we took that liberty and that freedom to write something like this that is for everyone. You don't have to be a Christian to listen to this music. Maybe somebody who doesn't come to church or have a relationship with Jesus might be put off to the idea of listening to worship. Um, but this is something different that can reach more people is at least our prayer. Um, so definitely that's why we were excited to kind of take this more creative route rather than doing another worship album. I love that you guys are addressing that. Now, I want to talk about you personally, and your journey. Uh, how did you get, first of all, you can tell me, how did you come to Christ? And second of all, how did you know that you like, like this, have this musical talent? Was it something that you discovered as you got older? And then how did you get involved all the way up to with the church today? So I grew up going to church every, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there was whatever church event there was, we were there, my family and I, um, and that's just kind of the way I grew up, the way I was kind of conditioned. I gave my life to Christ um, at a young age. I believe I was eight, got baptized at 11. And it was just kind of something that was a part of my life. I never really questioned it or questioned who God was. Um, and I was very, I'm a very um, type A personality. So like, I'll have, you know, my list and it's like, read my Bible, check, pray, check. And, you know, it's, it was just like, that's what you did. And um, I went on to go to Bible college. I came to CFNI, Christ for the Nations here in Dallas, Texas. And so I studied there. And to be honest, I went there not really knowing why. I just felt like I needed to. I was planning on going to music school because I had grown up, um, I'd grown up just being musical my whole life. My whole family's musical. My cousins, all my aunts, we all like sing or play instruments. My mom made us all take piano lessons growing up. And we, it was like a, a big thing for us music. And so I was planning on auditioning for music school. And then my senior year, I just kind of felt a tug um, for whatever reason to go to this college. I went and visited and just felt like, okay, I don't know why, because I had no plans or intentions on going into ministry, but I said, okay, God, I'll listen. So I came not really knowing why. And then when I got there, I kind of realized, okay, I know who Jesus is. I maybe know a lot about the Bible. I know, you know, I grew up in Sunday school and youth group and all of that. But it kind of clicked that I felt like I didn't have a very deep relationship with Jesus. It felt like I feel like I know him, but not really, if that makes sense. Um, so kind of around 18, 19, 20, those years really just kind of realized that and kind of dove deeper that's when I found fellowship church started coming here started serving as a volunteer um, then became part of our staff and working here um, under the leadership we have here and just growing a ton and it's so funny because I never thought I would go into ministry um, but as soon as I started doing it it was like whoa this is this is it this it just clicked and I don't know how I ever thought or dreamed to do anything differently um, so that's just kind of my story. That's how I kind of came to fellowship. Um, me and my husband came together and now we are both part of the creative team. So um, I sing and lead worship on the weekends. That's our, our main thing is always to just bring people to church and to know Jesus. And uh, my husband is our music director and also our producer of all of the albums that we produce. <laughs> but it, what I think is amazing, though, is how we can all get together and use our talents for the gospel. So Something that I was thinking about, some people may say, well, how come uh, people like so-and-so over here have 20 million followers on social media and it's like God blessing them, but I have this talent and I don't have a Disney name. Maybe I have 15,000 followers, which is still a lot. Um, does God not hear you know, and see what I do? But I think that it comes down to God gives people gifts. It's up to us what we do with our gifts. And I like the fact that you're out there and you're using your gifts and you're inspiring young women to go out and use their gifts for the Lord, whether you have 20,000 followers, 2,000 followers, or 20 million followers. We all have talents and it's up to you to decide who you're going to serve with them. Yeah, I love that. And I mean, I go back to 
you know, Jesus left the 99 for the one. And so if our music reaches 10 million people, that's awesome. And that's super exciting. But if I even hear one, two, three stories about people whose lives were changed because of that music, then that's, you know, job well done. That's, that's good enough for me. Well, your music is not going to reach one person. <laughs> no, sure. Y'all just put talent in there and your pastor's great. And I, I love his stories. It's really sad. Some of his personal stories. Um, but it's amazing that to see him still preaching the word of God, because God is not good based on our circumstances. He's was always a good God. And so to hear you guys come out with this album and see the ministry that you're doing with it and the thousands and millions of people you're going to impact from it. Wow. That's amazing. (laughs) Thank you. We're so excited to share it. And yeah, we hope it, it does impact, you know, whoever it needs to, God knows what he's doing. (laughs) All right. Last question for you is just tell us, promote, promote everything that you want to promote. Well, the Help Project, which is out now everywhere, you can listen to it wherever you listen to music, um, is for the youth. It's for the hurting. It's for people that need help, um, which we all do. I need help. You need help. We all need help. Um, And we just hope that it points people to the true help, the true answer, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, We know this world can get crazy. There's so much going on, but there's only one one answer, and, and that's Jesus. And so we hope that these songs help people. We hope that if you know someone that needs help, you can share it with them. And we have all kinds of resources. It's not just an album. It's truly a project. We've got a website called thehelpproject.com. You can go there and there's all kinds of resources. If you need help or you know someone who does, we've got a help book. It's kind of like a workbook to help guide you through your 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 journey, through your help journey, um, resources, counselors, suggestions, hotlines, all kinds of things, whatever you're dealing with. We're here. We know that you're not alone. I hope that you know that. And um, yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm excited for everyone to check out the album. Friends, what are your thoughts on our talks about identity and maybe obsession with phones or relationships and finding um, our whole value in someone else? Let me know in the comment section below if you've ever experienced any of these or any other difficult thing that you want to talk about. I'd love to hear your story. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Of course, follow me on social media. I will put all of that in the description box below. Until next time, I'm Brittany Valadez for BreakTheDaily.com. God bless and up. See you in the next one.